Hello everyone, welcome to my show Future Friday where we take a look into the aspect of future every Friday. So today is episode number three and we're gonna look at the Mars. So let's come along for the ride. Now first thing you have to know what it is. Well it's a planet. What does that mean? It's big, it has dominating orbit. That's the reason Pluto is no longer a planet, it's that it no longer has dominating orbit. So that's a plan. Basically, it's a big thing, as simple as that. And then you have to understand it's the second smallest planet. So first smallest is Mercury, then second is Mars. Then its position in the solar system is fourth. It's after Earth. And then you have to understand sometimes uh, you can see Mars from Earth with your naked eyes. Uh, you can employ the use of apps to do that and uh, if uh, you do need a binocular but if you use even a basic telescope you can see red point in the sky so and if you have very clear sky it's very easy to see then the question comes to why people want to go there first you have to understand is the only place we ever went to after the moon in terms of like robotics probe actually landing this is the only place we have done it's easy to go to for certain reasons and it has a lot of sci-fi interest like uh, attack from Mars and all that like there is old literature on this subject and it's been focus of many things uh, so science fiction has a lot of interest so it's always in public eye and then you have to also understand there's a lot of public interest nowadays because of private interest personally so what does that private interest means Elon Musk basically he wants to go there and create a self-sustaining colony so a lot of interest is happening it's easy to go to and uh, science fiction plus uh, billionaires trying to go there suffice to say it's it has a lot of interest so then question becomes okay what's like there one thing you have to understand it's cold basically it's freezing cold there so the temp lower side temperature can go up to minus 143 basically you really don't want to be outside and the hottest is ever reaches 35 degrees celsius now it might seem hot enough but here's the, that uh, that's rarely reached and it's summer at equator rarely reach that temperature and earth's uh, temperature can reach as high as 60 degrees celsius so suffice to say it even at the hottest point it does not reach hottest point on earth so and second part you have to understand is dust storm now a dust storm is not like how you see in the movie martian where you know a dust storm is kicking up things no however it makes solar panel use 100 percent pointless like dust storm can you know block your solar panel for a few days weeks and if there is a global storm like whole planet can be covered in dust storm where even for a month you will literally not see anything so and then it comes to the very dangerous part about mars it has 38 percent earth surface gravity so if you stand on surface of mars you're gonna feel 38 percent of your total weight let's say your weight is 100 kilo you're gonna weigh 38 kilo on mars and uh, one thing is quite unique about that it has almost same uh, day and night cycle almost 24 hourish sort of day and night cycle and the atmosphere well it does not have it like the uh, the atmosphere it has is 0.6 percent of uh, earth and it's mostly consists of carbon dioxide so quite useless and negligible atmosphere so let's look into the good part about it first good part about it is that it's technically possible we can go there with today's technology and bfr is under construction once it's done it will actually allow us to go to mars second it has accessible surface suffice to say gas planets we can't go it does not have a surface we can't go to mercury it's well it's hot and venus it's hotter than mercury so suffice to say on surface of venus a lead, lead will melt literally so Mars is the only surface we can uh, actually walk on after Earth, obviously. So these two aspects uh, really play a very crucial role. Why we actually want to go there? First, we can go there. Second, it has a surface that is actually, you know, traversable. It's almost like moon. Now, the bad. So what are the bad aspects of it? First, it has low gravity. What does that mean? Well, it only means death. Human body needs 1G. If you have uh, 0.3 Gs, it's not good enough for a human body. Heck, uh, males will loot, uh, lose eyesight as they are working in a low gravity environment. So 
you can give a planet atmosphere if you have enough energy and technology but you can't give it gravity so that's the biggest problem with mars it does not have gravity second it's not terraformable with any sort of technology that we have even a remote understanding of because it does not have enough gravity it cannot hold on to an atmosphere think of it this way venus while closer to the sun well, it's getting blasted by solar wind, somehow still has atmosphere many times thicker than Earth, hotter than Earth. Why? Because it has gravity. Mars, while being further away, while being, you know, as uh, solar wind spreads out, it's re receiving much less solar wind what compared to Venus. It's still very, very thin atmosphere. Why? It simply does not have gravity. So even if you magically give it an atmosphere, it will not hold on to it. It's like you give it an atmosphere, let's say in a hundred year, you just, you know, teleporting atmosphere there or dumping lot of cargo ship with worth of atmosphere is simply going to evaporate away over time. Even if you give it a magnetic shield, all it will do is slow it down. So it's unterraformable. Now, one thing you have to understand, Mars would be horrifyingly deadly to any human because of this low gravity. The thing people don't understand is spacesuits are very energy intensive devices. To wear them, to move even your arm like this, it takes a lot of energy. Why? Our body runs on oxygen, so you need oxygen. Now, you would, many of people know that suit in space are generally pressurized. Now, here's the problem. They are not pressurized with air because if they did, A, the suit uh, will become very rigid. Imagine trying to compress a ball like a football. So once you're trying to compress a football, you do realize it's, it's resisting it. Now imagine you are inside that football, trying to move your arms and legs uh, about. So it's going to be very, very tax consuming. Like you don't, like in sci-fi movie, they show that, you know, you're wearing spacesuit and walking around, but in real life, you will be exhausted by it. And there is no other space technology that is ready for actual use. Like in future, we might have Iron Man like suit, but right now we don't have anything. So because we have to wear spacesuit to go outside it's very painful to go outside second because we are losing bone uh, density as we are in the lower gravity we might not even able to do that like over time our bones might become weak enough that you know you try to move it your muscles can retain its form so you will snap your own bones so that part like everybody is like ignoring like how the heck you're gonna wear spacesuit in martian gravity now it's not an issue if you are doing that for two three days like you know that's easy but over time your bones will erode and then it becomes dangerous and then the question becomes after spending billions of dollars trillions of uh, hours of man hour what did you got you got a planet that is literal hell cold hell so at that point space station becomes a much better investment and i don't mean space station in terms of uh, something that is orbiting for research and i'm talking living space the good example is the movie elysium that's much easy to build. Of course, they went with more visual appealing, but uh, it's doable. It, it can be done and you will have gravity. So no side effect. You can put it uh, anywhere you want. You can radiation shield it by water, using water to cover it. So all things considered, a space habitat is much better investment of time if you actually want to give uh, humans uh, another backup place, so to say. A planet uh, like Mars does not give you any benefit in the long run so there are suffice to say there are quite low uh, quite bad things about mars that everybody is ignoring so suffice to say please be mindful of these things so that was my presentation thank you for watching i hope you liked it if you liked it please like if you didn't like it dislike leave a comment and if you're free subscribe and press the bell icon thanks for watching